Welcome to Family Worship, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to keep practicing it until we get it right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to speak tonight from the theme, Light and Darkness. Hallelujah. The three main scriptures tonight, I'm going to give you tonight in the beginning, which is John 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, and the extra Acts chapter 26 verse 18. Why am I talking about light? Why am I talking about darkness? God is light and in him is no darkness at all. No sin, no error, no wrong, no wrong growth, no wrong production, no wrong creation, no wrong words. There is no error in God who is light. Therefore, no darkness. Where there is no darkness, there is no error. Where there is no error, there is no darkness. When we're talking about coming from a standpoint of supernatural divine living, we're talking about the light and the darkness. Why is this important? It's important because we have Christians who live in the light, who God has made the light of the world, who are still living beneath their privileges, living outside of the package of salvation because salvation contains so many things, it's a package. We have unbelievers who are still under the darkness, because they have not come to God the way that he has designed. We read that design. The way to come to him according to his design is Romans chapter 10, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. We read that. We, we learn that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God who he is who created the heavens and the earth and made a great light and a lesser light who made all the stars. The one who spoke animals, seeds, and the fruits of their kind into existence. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I want to make it very clear and very plain that God doesn't change in this way. Light does not change into darkness. And darkness does not change into light. There's one and there's the other. And God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And darkness is darkness. And you can't take the two and mingle them together, they don't fit. They actually rebel against each other. They, they'll never touch. Satan will never be like God. And God will never be like Satan. Two different lights. Two different beings who live in two different uh, they live in two they live in contrast to each other. One, God who is light is the way of life, the way to live, the way to talk, the way to be, the original design God is. And the other is in rebellion to that which is the original. He's in rebellion to light. Not the light in this room, but God who is light. Satan really doesn't care if you turn the lights on or off. That doesn't, it doesn't fear him. It doesn't put fear in him. It doesn't check him. It has no authority. This light bulb 
has an authority over over sin. And I say these things at first so that I can get your mind stirring, get you thinking, get you wondering, get you warmed up to some things that's coming, that's some things that's going to be said. When I wasn't, when I was born, I was born in darkness. Any man, any woman who was born in sin is already in the darkness. Every man who comes to God according to Romans 10, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10, when they come to God that way, they are delivered by Christ from the darkness. At that very instant in life, at that very moment where there is a confession with our mouth and a belief in our heart that Jesus is Lord, he accepts you into himself. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So when you come into Christ at that very moment, I want some of you to look back so you can see what you couldn't see then, and you can understand what happened that night at the altar. That night, what happened? When you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord. He translated you out of the darkness and placed you into his marvelous light, mm -hmm. himself. Right. From that moment, you were no longer darkness. And so the question tonight to the believer is, how could darkness live in you? I'm going to be even so bold to say, darkness cannot live in you. A Christian doesn't have Darkness. Why? For greater is he, the Bible says, that is in the believer than he that is in the world. So light cannot fellowship with darkness. So how could inside you, you have light and darkness? I want to help clear the minds. I told you before, this is something that God was showing me years ago, something that I didn't want to speak because I never really went and did the footwork in the Bible to really understand it. And now at this time in my life, I'm speaking it because I, I get it. And I want others to know that when you don't know these things, Satan is able to bring darkness. He's able to come on you as darkness and remain in your life as darkness. In other words, God is not troubled. Light is not trouble. Light is only trouble to the enemy of light. God says in his word, I will trouble your troubles. What is he saying? I will come as who I am and I will make darkness flee. Your troubles are because of darkness. Whether the darkness is a lack of understanding, because that can be darkness, uh, or spiritual darkness, which is truly blindness. Right? And so we have in the body of Christ Christians who are living as if they were still in darkness, not understanding how to be who they already are light. Not only does God say that He is light, He says, I made the believer the light of the world. When light comes into you, and we're talking about God. When God comes into you, when he chooses you as his abode, you become illuminated. You become a light. If the light bulb wasn't illuminated because of the electricity, we would not call it a light bulb. We would call it a dark, a dark whatever, a dark object, but it wouldn't be light. We call it a light bulb for a reason. God has made you. And calls you according to how he designed you. So why would God call you a light if you were darkness? You are not darkness. You may have thoughts of darkness attacking your mind. You may have spirits of darkness attacking your life. But you are not darkness. And when you act as who you are. 
You hear it all the time, all across the world. People say, I am who my father made me. Okay, well, if you are who your father made you, why do we sometimes live as if we were still in the darkness? Why do we sometimes think as if we were still in the darkness? One of the answers to that is a lack of fellowship with light allows the mind to be governed by other voices, other teachers. In this case, we're talking about devils, we're talking about Satan, we're talking about demons who talk and who walk and who teach and minister that which is dark. Even to those who were born, reborn in the light and now have become light, the enemy will minister unto you the lie, the darkness, in hopes that you would receive it because he knows that the same way you get, got saved in yeah. Romans 10, 7, 8, 9, and 10 is the same spiritual principle that can get you unsaved if you do it backwards. How do you do it backwards? How do you walk by faith backwards? You live in doubt and unbelief and fear. Fear, faith is faith backwards. So, let's open up to the book of John, chapter 1. Excuse me, sorry, Psalms. Psalms 119, that's where we that's where we were last week, right? And I wanted to get back in that. Psalms chapter 119. And we're looking at verse 30. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it gives understanding unto the simple. Why am I here? It's because I have a message for people in the body of Christ. And a message for people who are in the darkness. People who don't believe. For the people in the body of Christ, if you don't live according to who you are, you will suffer what the unbeliever suffers. To the unbeliever, I'm saying to you, if you do not come to God according to Romans 10, 7, 8, 9, and 10, you will never escape the chains of bondage. The things that attack you in your life, the sickness, the disease, the lies, the hate, the war between family members, the, 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 the killing of the children, the murdering of your neighbor, uh, and we can go on, the list is extensive. Without Christ who is light, you're never, according to God gonna get out of the chains of darkness. Never, never will this happen for you. But this has happened to those who are already believers, but some believers walk as if this never happened. If the chain has never been broken. And so what is God doing by his spirit tonight? He's refocusing your attention to who he is and who you are. And nothing from the outside of you changes the truth that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And you are where? Where are you as a Christian? You're inside Christ Jesus. So because you're inside Christ Jesus, where does darkness have a right? to fellowship with you, except you begin to agree with darkness. But many of us, we don't understand what darkness is. We don't understand what sin is. We don't understand how issues come in our lives from the beginning. Many unbelievers, you don't even know that you were born in sin. That darkness is the result of sin. And to remove darkness, Sin must be dealt with. In order for a believer to, to remain as light in Christ and a light unto the world, all he has to do is imitate the path of the Lord who is light. And he'll keep himself clean and he'll forever 
shine. But to the, to the Christian, the believer, who doesn't understand God's word, this will have to happen again. Why? It once was told to me that you can be a light, but if you hang out with an overpowering darkness, you will become dark. Does that make sense? If you hang out with darkness, you will become darkness. So some people say, but I don't hang out with people who murder and break. And let me tell you something. For all the Christians in the body of Christ, there's a brethren that sits very close to you who murders all the time. The Bible says you can commit murder, that men commit murder in their hearts when they hate their brethren. And so you don't have to be around somebody who's physically killing somebody. You don't have to go and physically kill anybody with your hand. You can hate in your heart the creation of God. And in God's eyes, you're a murderer. There's a word being spoken tonight. And in the ears of individuals, the Holy Spirit will reveal what he wants you to know, he will reveal what you need to know. He will bring you out of dark thoughts that produce dark actions. He will bring you from under the deception of the enemy. Because where light is, in this case, Jesus, darkness must flee. So even in the ear, the inner ear of the unbeliever who's watching me, Tonight, today, is your day of release, your day of freedom. When you believe on the Lord with all your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, from that very moment, you are no longer darkness. From that moment, darkness has no more right to fellowship with you. You can command the enemy to leave you. You can command evil thoughts to leave you. You can command dark thoughts to leave you. Psalms 119 verse 130 The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple without the word of God that is light. How can man possibly come out of darkness? And so now I'll say to the believer, wherever the enemy is presenting troubles to you, darkness to you, lies are darkness, sickness is, is because of sin, it's darkness, uh, disease, whatever the darkness is that is trying to overtake your mind, you cannot obey it. You cannot listen to it. You cannot accept it. But how can you not accept it if you don't know who your father is and if you don't know what his word is? Without him and his word, you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. How can you possibly be who you are? You can be a light as, many, as every believer is a light. Jesus made them so. But how come all believers are not walking as light and getting the result that light produces? It's because there's an area of darkness that must be illuminated. How do you do it? You educate yourself. You educate yourself. You sit down in the school of the Holy Spirit. I didn't say the Temple of Baptist Silo Missionary Founder. I didn't say that place. You sit down in the school of the Holy Spirit. What do I mean by that? Pay attention to the Holy Ghost. You sit with your Bible. You trust in the Lord and put your faith in the Lord. You begin to read and study his word and the Holy Spirit simply because he's a teacher. 
He will guide you into all truth concerning all things needful for you to know. You must be a student of light in order to be a good disciple or, or person or being of light. The entrance of thy words giveth light. Without the entrance of God's word, where are the lost going? They're going nowhere. God said in his word, there are two roads in life. Many that men make up, but two, according to the Lord. One is narrow. And it leads to heaven. It leads to God. It leads to life. And Christ guides you there. You get to the Father through Christ. And then one is why. And there's all kind of things on that road. Things you want. Things you desire. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. And many are taking the wide road. Why? Because in the heart of an unrepentant sinner... Are these words written on the tablet of his heart? I will do what I want to do. But on the heart of the believer is I have surrendered to he who is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And my life is no longer my life. My life belongs to the Lord. The entrance of thy words giveth light. How? Is a man supposed to get life if light never makes an entrance into his heart? This is scary. This is scary. Mm -hmm. The entrance of thy words giveth light. What? Why does the entrance of God's word give light? It's because God's word is light. Mm -hmm. When God speaks, he cannot speak darkness. He cannot speak in error. He don't have to be, he don't have to worry about saying the wrong word. Why? There is no wrong in God. Mm -hmm. And so when God speaks, he is to be taken at his word. And that's when things change. That's when you change, the believer. And that's when you're going to change, the non-believer. When Romans chapter 10, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10 becomes your tangible. The word of God you believe. God going to take you right out of the sin you were born in. And place you into his marvelous life, Jesus the Christ. Without a place for God's word to enter, it has no entrance to cause illuminating change, Holy Spirit change. It has no entrance to Allow light to do what it does. Make darkness flee. So a closed heart, a hardened heart, a hardened mind, a closed mind to God who is light and the way he designed for you to receive him is a heart that cannot be illuminated or brought to life. By he who is spirit and life. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It gives understanding unto the simple. How does a man walk in understanding? He humbles himself under the word of the living God. Under the spirit of Jesus. Under the power of the Holy Ghost. Who is, by the way, the spirit of the living God. So 
you can safely say he is God. Right? The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Why am I reading it over and over? Because I'm penetrating. The Holy Ghost is penetrating the heart of the one who doesn't believe. And he's rejuvenating and clearing off, purging the heart and the mind of the believer who is being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You cannot be light and darkness at the same time. Make up your mind. Then we should see life's change, lifestyle change. You got people going to groups with certain titles to, to oh, we going to this group and we're going to learn how to life change. How We're going to learn about lifestyle that, that changes our lives. When all you got to do is listen to God. The interest of thy words giveth light and gives understanding unto the simple. Prideful men cannot receive God's word. Therefore, they will remain void of light. Prideful men who know it all know nothing and they will stay knowing nothing until God's word is received into that man, into that woman. And God's word that is light begins to purge the heart, purge the spirit, purge the mind, correct things, uproot things. There are things in certain lives that God wanna, he, 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 he wants you to walk in, but you can't walk in it because you won't study his word long enough in that area where you need to be in the word in order for you to change. So you cannot take a tire and put a tire on your car that cannot receive air. You can. That's dark. In other words, it's something that's being done without understanding. Why would you take a tire, your brand new Cadillac Escalade, why would you take the tires that came with, take them off, and take four tires that can't receive air and put them on it and drive around? Why? That's the mindset of the enemy for your life. He wants you to do that so that as you drive around, your rims begin to break down. Everything starts to break down from the bottom. Somebody said, well, how driving around on tires with no air, how is that going to hurt my engine? Keep doing it. The whole car is going to be affected because the car is going to have to pull and use more strength than it normally would if the tires were filled with air and allowed that float, that smoothness to happen. That's how it is in the life of a Christian who forsakes God's word. If the entrance of thy words giveth light and you stop and close your heart to God's mind, to the mind of the Holy Spirit, then how you're going to constantly receive light in a flow. I want to use that word, in a flow, in a consistent way. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. So we hear this tonight from the Lord. The entrance of God's words give light. I, I was sitting last night in the house and I was sitting on the couch and I said, you know what? I'm going to go to sleep early tonight. Normally then I usually go. Nothing was interesting to me. The TV was not. The computer was not. Nothing. It was just, and I wasn't really sleepy, but I, I obeyed what I, what I felt inside. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, get up and do this thing right now outside. Go do the garbage. It was like 1130 in the night. It was pouring raining. Slush was everywhere and it was cold outside. And I said, that don't make sense to me. He said, get up and do it. 
and do it now and you won't regret it. I got up and did it. He said, don't worry, you won't regret it. Then I got a phone call about an hour later and said, brother, I really appreciate you and I love you and thank you. You've been a good help to me. So I thought that was the reward. Holy Spirit said, no. Because when somebody thank you, that is a reward. When God puts it in the heart of somebody to thank you and hug you and love you, that, that is love rewarding you. But that wasn't it. The Holy Spirit said, no, wait for it. It hasn't come yet, but trust me, what you did is going to cause, it, it, he didn't say cause, he said what you did is going to come back in your favor. Every time you allow the word of God into your being, and I'm not just talking about the logos. Mm -hmm. Every time you listen to the spirit of God and those in the darkness, you can't even, you, you don't know the spirit of God from a roach. That's what darkness does. It blinds you from the truth. It even, it even, uh, constructs illusions that makes things that are of sin look like God who is light, and you won't be able to tell the darkness I, I, the difference I couldn't tell the darkness I couldn't tell the difference of darkness and light until Jesus saved my life and that's when things began to become clear but it took me years to understand to become simple enough to understand I could never be darkness. What do I do with that? I don't even got to think a whole bunch of things. I can't even think a whole bunch of things. It makes the enemy more visible to me. Why? Kill yourself is a statement produced by sin. You're not your creator. You're not the origin of your birth. You're not the source of your air. Who said you had the right to kill yourself? Uh, a suicide is a condition of darkness. I mean, sin, therefore, being darkness. Jesus is not telling men to kill themselves. That's the pressure of sin. That's the pressure that they got under darkness that's causing them to buckle. But when God says, pay attention to my word, study my word, study to show thyself approved in the eyes of the Lord, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He's getting you to this right here. This is what, this is what, this is his motive. Every time you sit in the presence of the Lord and you walk with God, when you talk with God, when you study his word, when you receive the rhema and study the logos, this is what's happening. The entrance of thy words giveth light. How could you be darkness? Somebody say, I am not darkness. I am not darkness. Say sometime. Dark thoughts come. Dark thoughts They're, not They're not mine. They don't belong to me. Belong. Say, I rebuke, I rebuke every thought every of, darkness of darkness because I am light. Because, am light. because greater is he greater that is in me, God, God, who is light, than he that is in the world. It's no way. It's no way. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I never knew a man was supposed to treat his wife as his equal until I read the Proverbs. Until I searched the Bible, the scriptures. Until, and even then, I was still under a darkness about it. I didn't understand. The Holy Spirit, the living word, began to talk to me. 
You see, you need more than just the logos to read. You need the rhema to speak. God and his word are one. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I'm in the wrong chapter, excuse me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 4, verse 6. Let's look at the Daba like this. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's start from verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, what ministry? As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in the craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Those who, I'm not reading this, I'm saying this. Those who have not renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, those who are still walking in craftiness and not handling the word of God and still handling the word of God, excuse me, deceitfully, are still even if they have confessed Jesus as Lord, are living under darkness and suffering darkness because something in their walk is wrong. They're not simple before the Lord and because they're not simple, they have no understanding. They need to be an entrance for God's word to enter because God's word bringeth forth light. Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in the craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to, the every, to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And this is why we, do, we, don't, we don't worry about what Satan say about us. We should not. And if you are, stop it and tell them. Your words to me are nothing but darkness. And your words, because they are darkness, can't have fellowship with me. Can't live inside me. Why? For what right does darkness have to do with light? God is light. And in me is the greater one. I am the light of the world. May so by his hand. Flee from me in Jesus mighty name. But if our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. That's why I'm talking to the lost. And I'm talking to the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Jesus, you're not lost to Jesus. But those who don't believe, you're still lost right now. Listening to me. If you haven't did Romans chapter 10, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10, you're still lost. And that, this is your moment to change that right now. But if God be God, let him change me. That's not how God works, honey. That's not how God works, brother. God makes himself available for change. You have to give yourself over to the word of God. That's one of the ways of saying Psalms 119, verse 30, the entrance of thy word giveth light. When you give yourself over to light, you open up your spirit, you open up your heart, you open up your mind, and God comes in. Light comes in and lives with you, illuminating you from the inside out. If there's any thought in you that is saying you're dark, you're heavy, you're down, you're broke, you're sick, you're this, you're that, it's not coming from the inside, it's coming from the outside. But for the unbeliever, it is very possible that it is coming from the inside of you. Why? If Satan be darkness. And you were born in darkness. Where do you live? Who do you fellowship with? Darkness fellowships with darkness. Light begat light. And so maybe your thoughts will change. Maybe your lifestyle will change. Maybe 
your home will change. Maybe the fighting between you and your husband, you, you, your brother and your sister will change. Maybe the murder will not take place. If light, Jesus, the only one who destroys sin, is present in your being. Me and my wife don't fight. We don't fight. Why we don't fight? We don't fight because we both look at Christ to be our head. It don't please him. It surely don't please us. But it don't please him. If I didn't have the word of God that will teach me how to live with my wife, we would be fighting, we would be arguing, we would be screaming, I would try, I would be having dominion over her by force. She would have to kill me to get off. What? That's who we were. When we were sometimes darkness. But we are not no longer darkness. Look at verse 4. In whom the God of this world... Let me read verse 3 again. But if our gospel be hid, this is why you have to believe in the Lord. And do Romans chapter 10, verse 7, 8, 9, 10. This is why every Christian has to stay in his word constantly. And stay in the presence of the Lord constantly. No longer turning back. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. There is a God who is not Jesus. Ruling the earth. Lee Realm, right now. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. The minds of those who believe not are being controlled and dominated by a spirit who is called God with a small g. And is blinding the minds of men. Those men will stay in chains. Until they believe in God who is light and come to him his way. And the believer will, who, is, who is struggling will continue to struggle until he realizes he is no longer darkness. This God with a small g is no longer his God. Because Jesus has become his God, his Lord and his Savior. We live by a whole new set of rules. We've become new creations in Christ Jesus. No longer that which we were. For we were sometimes darkness. But now are we in light and even have become lights. God is the father of lights. What? God is the father of what? Lights. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not every one of you who don't believe your mind is blinded by the God of this world. And every Christian who's struggling with faith, Satan is the adversary and the one coming up against you, clashing with your mind to tell you that God is not the truth. And that his word cannot be trusted. To tell you that God is not alive. Because if God is not alive. If you receive the lie. That God is not alive. You will never live. With the life of Christ on the inside of you. You will always be dead. Dead where? In the trespasses of your sins. In order not to be, first of all, under darkness anymore, you have to give your life to Christ. For the believer who has already come out and were darkness and no longer is darkness, you have to remain in God's word, remain in the presence of his spirit, constantly giving yourself, giving his word entrance. Now, catch 22. Somebody may say, 
If God, if the greater one is on the inside of you, then why you got to constantly give God an entrance? Not in your spirit. Once Christ saved your spirit and come into your spirit, your spirit is saved, but your mind must be transformed by the renewing of his word all the time. All the time. Watching TV will put you to sleep spiritually. Listening to the wrong music, will, music that was designed under sin, will put you to sleep spiritually. Hanging out with people who are still of the darkness and have not surrendered their lives to Christ will put you to sleep spiritually. Drugs will put you to sleep. The desire for another man's woman will set your life on fire. It even is already on fire. Why? Because you have a desire burning within you that does not come from the Lord. And that fire leads to hell. And so believers are going through things that they don't have to go through all because they don't know who they are. We are no longer under the power and authority of this God with a small g. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. No wonder you don't know God. You don't know God because you won't give him a, you won't give, you won't believe by faith. You won't walk by faith and not by sight. You're under the power of blindness. How can a blind man see? I didn't say how can a blind man live blind because that's possible in the physical and in the spiritual. A spiritually blind man can live in the physical realm blind, never ever seeing Jesus as Lord. So you see Jesus as Lord. You know Jesus as Lord. Are you blind? Or can you see? Say it. I can see see clearly, clearly that Jesus, that Jesus is, Lord. is Lord and because of that because of I can that, see, see clearly clear. this word the interest of God, God's word produces confessions these faith proclamations in, inside of you that keep you sharp that design your world When your body is feeling tired and the enemy is telling you you're tired and you don't want to go to work and you don't want to go to school and you don't want to feed the kids and you don't want to live no more. You need God's word in order to keep it off you. If you let the darkness come on you, it'll come on you. It'll come on you. The preacher will be depressed. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Without Christ, you can't see. So, is it safe to say, whatever an issue is presenting itself to you, you'll be able to do it, move it, break it, succeed, be victorious, because you can see. So, how could darkness be more heavier than light? When light causes darkness to flee. Spiritual and physical. God said in the beginning, he spoke where there was no form. Ha, I've been loving this. I've been loving this one. Where there was no form, God spoke and form appeared. Where there was no light, God, who is light, who is a spirit, spoke and a physical light appear. What God says to you is exactly what's going to happen. And this is why I came tonight 
because that's the main part of the meal. What God, who is light, says to you has to happen. But you got to have a connection. His word has to have an entrance. You have to be simple in order to keep, uh, in order to gain and keep understanding. You can't be a thinker that stays up all night trying to figure it out. You can't let the dead court be the giant, the Goliath that scares you so much out of the presence of the Lord. You can't let the insecurities that was when you were growing up before you were delivered, be the insecurities that Satan used against you to keep you from where you have already grown up, and now you just got to be grown. Mm -hmm. Talking about the word now, because, you know, some of you are grown already, and that's why you lost. You're too grown. You got to be simple. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119, verse 30, you got to be simple. What is simple? Romans chapter 10, verse 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the only simple you got to be. Look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 9. Mm, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go to verse 7. I would read the whole thing, but I'm getting short on time here. So I'm going to start at verse 7. But I would tell you, read the whole thing in your spare time. 2 Corinthians, I mean, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, let's pick it up at verse 7. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. To those who believe Jesus is what? Precious. Is he precious to you? Yes. Why on the day he is not, why on the day Satan presents him as not being precious to you, you buckle under pressure. When you don't have to, why? We're no longer under the God of this world. His authority to us is nothing. His authority to us is as good as as under our feet, which shows dominion. God and his word is total dominion. God and his word is total dominion. Look at verse 7. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of office to those who don't believe Jesus has become the stone of stumbling. You can't kick against the prick. You can't hate the water that gives you life and keeps you from dying. I brought you a bottle of water on the desert. You ain't have water for just about the time you was about to die. And I didn't give it to you. And I poured it in the sand. That's wrong. Why would Christ, why would the Father present Christ to us? And allow him to take our transgressions in the book of Isaiah. Take our iniquities bear our sins upon his body on the cross and by his wounds we were healed and then it not work. Water works. The Holy Spirit is the living water of God. He works. He's alive. If you spend time with water, you gotta come out wet. You cannot get in the shower and turn the water on. I don't care if you put on a rain suit. The rain suit is going to get wet. Even from the splashes of water, the water is going to get on your face somehow. Soon. The entrance of God's word giveth light. Pay attention to it. Turn to him. Open the Bible. Read. Turn. 
and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble. I'm back in verse 8. At the word. See, they stumble at the word. They stumble at the word, but believers don't stumble at the word. Satan presents that lie to them that they stumble all the, over the word. But that is nothing a believer who is light supposed to say. And we say it in so many different ways. Now understanding who we are, we speak what we feel. I don't feel like light today. I don't feel like light in court. Landlord coming up against me. I don't feel like light. I got enemies on the left and enemies on the right. What does enemies on the left of you and on the right of you got anything to do with you being the light except that they're coming up against you because you're the light? They want to see themselves destroyed. For what darkness can be light? I said the Holy Spirit would be talking to you individually words of wisdom and knowledge and understanding changing the life of those who allow the word to have an entrance I told you I didn't copy nobody I didn't repeat what nobody said I, the Holy Ghost told me what to say I didn't mock no man. I didn't hear a message and decide to take that message and say these things. The Holy Ghost said that you who would be watching would hear him speak to you. And when you listen, your life will change. That's what he said. That's what he said. And I'm glad it's original because I don't like copying people. Unless the Lord say repeat what he said. Other than that, I don't want to repeat what he said. Unless the Holy Ghost right here want to use something that was said in another man or through another man. Other than that, I don't want to, I don't want to say it. Why? I can go and spend time with God for myself and come out and say something that has never been heard. I said, God and his word are total dominion. And when you surrender to total dominion, darkness has to leave your life. I was a drug addict. I was sleeping in the street. I was sleeping in the train. I have feces in my underwear. How many times I'm going to tell you the story? Urine, so much urine in my underwear that my private part was stuck to my underwear. I couldn't even urine. The, the, when the urine would try to come out, it would burn me because it was stuck together. I was wearing Inichi suits and Sean John outfits, $120 and $300 suits, and walking around in my own feces. Because when you're under darkness, you can't see which way to go. Christians, go to pray. Go to pray about whatever it is. Not to God as if you were just waiting for something. But go to God in fellowship with God. Not as if you just entered his presence, but walk with God. God talks to those who walk with him. How did I get out? Somewhere in all of that pain I had inside of me, God saw an entrance into my life. Listen, he didn't say there had to be an entrance in you. He said God's word. Before I say it, I want you to think about it. The entrance of thy word. The entrance of thy word. Not the entrance you make. The entrance of God's word. Bringeth light. 
You don't even got to have a desire for God. God will approach you and give you a desire for him. And that's what he's doing. He's giving you who are dead in sins and trespasses and sins. The pressures of life got you broken. And you don't see no way to believe God. God is approaching you right now. And he's coming in. And as he come in, he's creating an entrance. And if you receive what he's saying to you, your life will change. He came. I was walking down the street. It was 90 degrees. I just finished stealing everything from the house. I was trying to get money from my wife. It was hot. I, 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 I had so much feces on my body. I was afraid to walk in the full motion of a man. I, I would walk like this because I didn't want to crack it in all that heat. If you ever stepped in horse manure when it's solid, sometimes you don't smell it. But when you step on it, that smell will come and get you and knock three humps in your brain. So I was scared to crack it and I would walk like this. So blind by the adversary, I didn't even want to take a bath. I just wanted to get high. So blind, I'm in right now, that you constantly fighting with your mate. You constantly stealing. You constantly murdering men because you are blind. You don't understand that there's a consequences for the things you do and the things you say. And every man lives once and stands before God. He's going to deal with us. But those in Christ have been dealt with. You don't got to be darkness no more. You don't got to talk it. You don't got to act it. You don't got to receive it. You don't got to fake it. All you got to do is be light. Verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. This is who you are. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He did not say into his marvelous light and darkness. Sometimes you got to read what you can't see in order to understand what you can't see. This is the specialty. Of the Holy Spirit. Light makes you see. You got a young man out there. I can't figure out what to do. Everything is always crazy. Sit down and become simple. Sit down before the word of God. And become simple. And God will approach you. When your heart cries out for him. And you thirst for him. The entrance of thy word giveth light. Your prayers don't necessarily give light. But when God answers your prayers, light has came. How many of you know when you pray? It's just a prayer. But when God answers your prayers, it's an answer prayer. There's difference. So imagine the ones who pray without faith. Imagine the ones who pray and worry. The believers now who get nothing because they didn't act right. They didn't approach right. They didn't believe right. All right, I'm going to close out. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past you were not a people, but are now the people of God. Say, I am now the people of God, because I believe in Jesus the Christ. The people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. 
people in darkness, do they obtain mercy? Yes, people in darkness have mercy. They obtain no mercy. The mercy that is to be obtained by them is the mercy that they get when they believe and receive Jesus as Lord. It's hard. But who said God was not? And who said he was? Who said he's not and who said he was? Let God tell himself, tell the people who he is. Look, look. Which in times past, verse 10, were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. He was talking about a people who did not believe. And then they began to believe. When did they begin to believe? When the word of God, when Christ showed up on the scene and began preaching the gospel. The entrance of God's word bringeth light, sister. Go and sit with God. Don't struggle with God. Go and sit with God. If it take day in and day out, guess where you were? You were in a place where you should come out illuminated. Light makes things change. <laughs> Light makes things change. Light makes things change. Light makes darkness flee. Oh, Lord, I'm going to say it one more time. Jesus, I feel by your power of your spirit. God is talking to people. He's talking to people in their homes. He's talking to people in this room. Listen to him. Listen to him. There's a story in the Bible. The disciples were going through something. And Jesus' mother said, listen to him. Listen to God. Listen to the Savior. Listen to he who is like. Listen to the way out of every temptation. Listen to he who has given you authority over every serpent and over every scorpion, which means to you, people who are just learning, every demon, every sickness, every disease, every hate, every murder, every doubt, every unbelief. Say, I have obtained mercy. Have obtained mercy. Now, Father, My Father, 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 stretch forth thy hand. Forth hand. Use every minister you Use can. Every minister, every minister that's willing. Go forth and bring them out of the darkness and into your marvelous life. Those who are watching, who are hearing and have heard, and because they've heard, faith has came. Lead them. To say, Jesus, I believe that you are Lord and that you are Savior. Bring me out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. And then strengthen them to know that it is done. Because God cannot lie. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. I'm going to read one more real quick, and that's the last one. Acts, look at Acts. Look at Acts. I did something different this time. It was, it was beautiful. I, I was speaking to a brother, and while we were talking, it came up in me. I took, one, two, three, four. I took four main scriptures from each class that I'm doing, and I opened up with the main scriptures. And this is how it's coming out. I don't know. That I'm telling you, just, all right. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. To open, check myself, Acts 26, verse 18. Okay. Uh, 
Look at verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee. This is Jesus appearing unto uh, Saul when he was Saul before he made him Paul. All right. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Uh, verse 17, let me slow it down. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. In other words, I'm sending you now. The ones you killed. The ones the enemy used you to steal from and destroy. And I'm going to send you to them. Look at verse 18. Why? What does light come to do? After this, you're never going to be able to say you're dark. You're never going to be able to say you fear. You're never going to be able to say a lot of things you were saying, even in today. Look, to open their minds, Christ has come. To open their minds, their eyes, which means their minds, their spirit. And to turn them from darkness. Christ, the Father sent Jesus into the world to turn men from darkness. Why won't you turn? Is it that you're stubborn? To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to the light. And from the power of Satan. The power of Satan over man is under the darkness. Satan operates in the dark. And has dominion in the dark. So how can he have dominion over the believer? He cannot. Except for what you agree with him. Say Satan. Satan. You are no longer my Lord. You were under the darkness. But now I am. In he. Who is light. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to the light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness. There is no forgiveness of your sins until you turn from darkness unto he who is light. There is no forgiveness for your sins until you turn from darkness to he who is light. He said that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. There is an inheritance that every believer has. So the ones who are suffering, even as believers, are the ones who lack knowledge of their inheritance. Even for you who don't believe, Jesus died and left you an inheritance. You'll never get to it until you come to him, until you come to the Father, until you cross the bridge. Who is Jesus? The bridge of reconciliation. Forget about what your father's trained you in. Forget about what your mother's taught you. Forget about how they dressed you when you was little. You may have grew up a Muslim. You may have grew up a Buddhist. It, listen, when it comes to God, it doesn't matter what you think. What matters is what he says. And God is speaking to men about things right now that matters. Why? To keep you from going back to who you were and to get those who are in darkness out. I love you. Jesus loves you. God loves you. This is family worship. Breaking the chain school of ministry. Always remember we walk by faith and not by sight. And that's easier said than done. You must put study behind that or you'll live your life saying you're a believer for years and will be suffering as a non-believer even though you are a believer. The entrance of God's word bringeth light. It's not just because you say yes. It's God's word. When it makes an entrance into your life, it gives light in your life. The light of God. The light of Christ. We love you. We bless you. And uh, for those of you who watch, who live near, 
We invite you to come and visit us here. Stop being afraid. Stop being timid. Stop being lazy. And come and visit us here in the church. It would greatly do us such a wonderful thing mm -hmm. to hug you, to touch you, to love you. And for those of you who far, keep watching until God gets you to a place that you can call your own. In the meantime, believe God. He is your home. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.